friends, Miss Danny from the Pleasant Hills Public Library, and I'm so excited that you're here with me today for STEAM Stories. So today, we are going to be learning all about plastic. I bet if you look around the room that you're in, you can find at least one thing made out of plastic. Chances are you can find many things that have plastic in it. Plastic is used in all sorts of things, from clothing, to cups, to food packaging, to parts of your car, parts of your house even. Little tiny things like earrings and great big things like house siding. It's crazy. Plastic is so popular because it can be made into all sorts of things, all different types of sizes and shapes in a variety of colors. In 1869, the first ever plastic was invented by an American by the name of John Wesley Hyatt. He called his plastic celluloid because he used a plant material known as cellulose. Later, in 1909, an American chemist invented a different type of plastic using all synthetic materials. His name was Leo H. Bakeland, and he called his plastic Bakelite. Plastics have come a long way from 1909. Some still use synthetic materials, and some use natural materials. Most plastics today use a variety of materials, including chemicals derived from oil, natural gas, and coal. Plastics can be made into almost any shape when you heat them at a very high temperature. Heating them softens the plastic and allows you to put it into a mold. Softer plastics can be melted down into many different shapes, which is how they are recycled but harder plastics will not melt no matter how high the fire, and those cannot be recycled. Plastics are wonderful, but they're also kind of terrible sometimes. They aren't biodegradable, which means they won't rot, they won't decompose, and some scientists believe that every single piece of plastic ever made since the 1900s still exists in one form or the other today. That's crazy. A lot of plastic is single use. In fact, 90% of the plastics that you encounter, you'll only use once. Think of your plastic grocery bags, plastic silverware, packaging on items. You use it once and then you throw it away. What happens to that plastic? Well, a lot of it ends up in landfills and even more of it ends up in the ocean. By 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the oceans. That's not that far in the future, my friends, and that's pretty scary to think about. To help combat plastic pollution, there are three things you can do. Reduce, reuse, and recycle plastic. To reduce your use of single-use plastic, remind your grown-ups to bring cloth or reusable shopping bags the next time you go to the grocery store. Use a thermos or other container instead of trashing water bottles. And if you're gonna have a picnic or having a packed lunch, put in real silverware that can be washed and reused later. To reuse plastic, you can find different ways to use it. You can create crafts out of plastic like we're going to do later. You can also find different purposes for it. And lastly, recycle. Find out what types of plastic your local recycling plant accepts. Most don't accept all the types of plastic, but a couple, and you can find that out if you visit their website. Pictured here is a plastic bag floating on the ocean. If you would like to never see something like that again, don't forget to reduce, reuse, and recycle plastic. And now, let's hear a story. For our first story today, we're going to learn how one girl finds an innovative way to reuse plastic. This is called Rainbow Weaver, and it's written by Linda Elevitz Marshall and illustrated by Elisa Carferi, and read today with permission of Lee and Lowe Books. High in the mountains above Lake Atalan, Isha watched her mother weave thread into fabric as beautiful as a rainbow. 
The fabric had blues as clear as the sky, red as bright as the flowers, and yellows as golden as the corn. Mama, Michelle asked, may I weave too? Her mother shook her head. Not now, Michelle. She answered, this cloth is for the market. If it brings a good price, it'll help pay for your school and books. In and out, in and out. Ishelle's mother and neighbors wove on backstrap looms. They wove as their mothers, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers had done before them, as Mayan women had done for more than 2,000 years. After a while, Ishelle asked, Mama, may I weave now? Again, her mother shook her head. Count threads with me, my love. I'll show you how we make designs. Ishelle and her mother counted together. Hum, kai, ak, kai. With each additional color, the cloth grew longer and the design prettier. Ishelle reached for some thread. Please, she asked. No, my love, answered her mother. You are still too young, and there is no extra thread. Michelle crossed her arms and studied the hard-packed dirt of the yard. I want to weave. I want to help pay for my books in school, too, she thought. But she didn't say anything. Instead, she walked towards the milpa the field where the villagers planted corns, beans, and squash. Plastic bags littered the path. Day after day, more bags were tossed from windows of passing vehicles or discarded by people returning from market. No one could use all the bags, and there was nowhere to put them. Pushing the bags aside, Yishel gathered branches and sticks. Some of the sticks were long and some were short. She carried the sticks and branches home, then tied them together. What are you doing? A neighbor asked. Making a loom, Michelle answered. Her mother smiled. But Michelle, she said, we don't have any extra thread. I know, Mama, she answered. I won't take any. Ishelle tied one end of her loom to a tree, then she gathered tall blades of pajang grass. Sitting on the ground, Ishelle joined the blades of grass together by knotting the ends of one blade to the end of another until she made a long chain. Then she pushed the batten over and under, back and forth, turning the blades of grass into fabric. When the fabric was finished, it was too small to be a doormat or even a placemat. It was too scratchy to wear as a bracelet. And worst of all, it was a dull greenish white. The fabric was far too small, far too scratchy, and far too dull for anyone to buy. Michelle knew it would never sell. Disappointed, Michelle took another walk. Climbing the path villagers took to bring sheep up the mountain, she saw a clump of black wool hanging from a branch. Michelle tucked the wool under her belt. She noticed more clumps of black and white wool dotting the grasses, sticks, and plants, and Ishelle gathered this wool and tucked it under her belt, too. At, at home, Ishelle turned and twisted the wool, spinning it into a long, thick stand of yarn. Then, over and under, back and forth, she pushed the baton and wove the yarn into fabric. Ishelle looked at what she had woven. The fabric was thick and heavy. The colors were boring. Tiny pieces of grass and dirt were stuck in the fabric. The weaving was far too thick, far too boring, and far too dirty for anyone to buy. Tears rolled down Michelle's cheeks. Oh, there's no way my weaving will sell in the market, she thought. No way I can help. Wiping her tears, Ishelle headed towards the milpa again. Along the way, she kicked aside a plastic bag. Red, purple, orange, green, yellow, and blue bags were everywhere. They were in the fields, drooping from branches and clogging roads and ditches. There were so many bags, it was hard for her to walk. 
Angry, Shell picked up a bag. She ripped it to shreds, and suddenly, she had an idea. Do you know what it is? Yishelle gathered bag after colorful bag. She took the bags home, washed them, and hung them to dry. Well, now what are you doing? Another neighbor asked. Yishelle smiled. You'll see, she answered. By the next day, the bags were dry. Yishelle cut each bag into long, thin strips, and she tied the strips together. Sitting at her loom, Michelle pushed the baton over and under, back and forth, weaving until she had used all the strips. The fabric was short, but it was clean and colorful. It had blues as clear as the sky, red as bright as the flowers, and yellows as golden as corn. The fabric looked like a beautiful rainbow, almost as pretty as the weavings of her mother, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers before her. Wondering what else she could make with plastic bags, Ishelle heaped, headed down to the mill pond. As she gathered more bags, the path looked cleaner and the countryside prettier. When Ishelle returned home, her mother and neighbors were waiting with colorful plastic bags. We saw what you were doing, said a neighbor. We wanted to help. And without the bags everywhere, our village looks pretty again, said another neighbor. Michelle thanked them. Then she handed the weaving to her mother and said, My first rainbow. Her mother hugged her close. It's beautiful, my love, she said. Thank you, Mama, Michelle said. Do you think it will sell? Let's take it to the market and see, said her mother. At the market the next day, Ishelle and her mother watched as people walked by the stalls. Finally, a woman stopped. She picked up Ishelle's weaving and asked, Did you make this? When Ishelle nodded, the woman smiled. Her weaving sold and for a very good price. Michelle beamed with happiness. Now she could help pay for her books and school. And like her mother, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers before her, Michelle had woven a rainbow. Even though the Pleasant Hills Public Library is still closed to the public, we are here for you. And one way that we're here for you is by offering curbside pickup service, which means that you can check out any item inside the Pleasant Hills Public Library or request any item from Allegheny County Public Library System and have it delivered here and have it checked out to you, put in a bag with your name on it and put outside on our pickup service table at a time you decide during our business hours. With that in mind, I'd like to talk about just a couple books that relate to our theme today of plastic and recycling. If you'd like to check out any of these books, you can let us know by sending an email to pleasanthills at einetwork.net, calling us at 412-655-2424, or sending us a message on social media. I'm going to start today with this book. So in the story we read, Rainbow Weaver, Michelle used the plastic littering her beautiful countryside in an innovative new way. She turned it into plarn or plastic yarn and weaved with it. This awesome story, One Plastic Bag, talks about the women of Gombay, Africa, and how they learned to turn plastic bags into plarn and crochet beautiful purses to sell at the market. If you'd like to learn more about plastics, I recommend that you check out this book. And bonus, it's part of a series. This is You Wouldn't Want to Live Without Plastic, written by Ian Graham and illustrated by David Antram. It tells you all about the history about plastic and how it's made today. And if you like it, there's tons of other books in this series about a wide variety of topics. Plastic is a bit of a problem, especially when it comes to plastics in our oceans. If you'd like to learn more, I recommend these two books, Plastics Ahoy, written by Patricia Newman and it photographs by Annie Crawley, or Plastic Sucks, written by Doogie Poitner. 
If you'd like to learn more about recycling, you should check out these books. This is Recycle, written and illustrated by Gail Gibbons, and this one is Reduce, Reuse, and Recycle, written by Elizabeth Weitzman. Both of these books talk more about the recycling process for a variety of materials. If you'd like to find new ways to reuse plastics, especially in terms of crafts and activities, I recommend you check out these books. Recyclables Fun, Creative Craft Ideas, edited by Diane Kurtzen and illustrated by Ron Lee Hall, or Backyard Adventure by Amanda Thompson. Both of these books talk about different ways to reuse items you might otherwise recycle. If you'd like to learn more about weaving, I recommend you check out these books. This is The Cloud Spinner, written by Michael Ketchpole and illustrated by Allison J. And this one is Friendship Bands, written by Mars Bush, Najee Lair, Angelica Neeb, and Elizabeth Walsh. This one is a fiction picture book, but it's still really fun. And this one teaches you how to weave awesome bracelets. If you'd like to learn about weaving with other types of materials, I recommend you check out these craft books. This is Paper Fun Mania, written by Amanda Flamoro, and this one is Cool Leatherworking Projects by Rebecca Felix. And now it's time for STEAM! So do you remember what STEAM stands for? Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. Our project today is available as a take-home kit while supplies last. Now, if you can't get our kit for whatever reason, don't worry. I bet you have most of the supplies in our kit at home already. In our kit is a piece of cardboard that measures six by eight inches, two strips of cardboard that are six inches long, 10 pieces of plarn, and I'm gonna show you how to make that in a little bit, a popsicle stick, and a plastic needle. Now, the plastic needle is probably the only thing you don't have lying around at home, or maybe you do, but it's not absolutely necessary for this project. It just makes it a little bit easier. And now I'm gonna show you how to make plarn in case you wanna do different colors than what is in our kit, or you would like to make some of your own. Here is our completed steam project for the day. To make this, we're gonna need several pieces of plarn or plastic yarn. This is what one strip looks like. In your kit are 10 pieces of this plastic plarn. But if you'd like to make different colors or make your own just for fun, you'll need a plastic bag and a pair of sharp scissors. Start by flattening your plastic bag and tucking in those insides. You'll wanna smooth it out as best you can doesn't have to be perfect, just as best as you can do it. Use your sharp, sharp scissors to cut off the handles all the way across. And flip it and cut off that end seam all the way across. If you were to open your bag, you would now notice it's a loop. Smooth out your cut bag again. What I like to do to make it a little bit easier is to fold it and smooth, fold it and smooth, and then if your scissors are really sharp, you can do it one more time and cut through all of those layers of plastic at once. Use your sharp, sharp scissors to cut about an inch strip of your plastic. Your plarn can be wider or thinner depending on your own personal preference, but about an inch, give or take, works really well. Now that you have your strips cut, it's time to open them up and cut one side to stop it from being a loop. Repeat with all of your loops. One plastic bag will make anywhere from 10 to 15 strips of plarn, depending on how thin or thick you cut it. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make a cardboard loom. In our kit is a piece of cardboard that is six by eight inches and two six inch strips. If you didn't get our kit, find some thicker cardboard and cut them to those dimensions. You're also going to need a ruler, 
a pencil, and a pair of scissors. Take your ruler and measure one inch down and one inch from the bottom. So basically at the one and the seven mark. You can draw lines all the way across if it helps. You will also need glue for this step. Take your glue and put it along that line that you drew at the one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom. Take your six inch strips and line them up with that line. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. We're not building cupboards or lock boxes here, but you wanna make sure to leave yourself enough space. Now take your ruler and mark one inch from either side and then a half inch in between those spots. Like so. And repeat with the bottom. Now we're gonna need some sharp scissors again. We're gonna take our scissors and at each mark, cut just a little triangle like so. Now before we can weave, we wanna make sure our loom is completely dry. You might wanna set it aside and come back to this a little bit later. The nice thing about this cardboard loom is that you can reuse it. You can make many, many weavings like this or make other things with it too. If you're feeling really ambitious and have a lot of access to cardboard, you could even make a bigger loom to make a bigger weaving. Once your loom is dry, it's time to start weaving. For this portion, you'll need your loom, your plarn, and some tape. After we're done weaving, we'll need our popsicle stick, or if you want to go for a more natural look, you can get a stick from outside and use that instead. Our kit includes a plastic needle. If you're unable to get our kit, you can just use your fingers. The needle just makes it a little bit easier. We're gonna start by taking our plarn and stretching it through the notches we made on our loom. Now you wanna leave a couple of inches on the back and you can secure it with a piece of tape. You can rip your plarn or you can get scissors to do that. We're gonna keep doing that until all the notches have Plarn. Once you've filled all the notches and secured all the tails, you're ready to weave. If you needed to cut off any extra plarn, save that. We can use that later to make a pom-pom. Now we're going to do our weaving. So select your first piece of plarn. Put it underneath one of these and do a double knot. Leave the tail of the knot out. We'll deal with that later. Now, if you have your plastic needle, you can thread the plarn through the needle to make this next part a little bit easier. When we're doing a weaving, we go over and under, over and under. So we'll start by going under, then over, then under, then over, then under, then over, like that. Make sure to pull your plarn all the way through. Now to start your next row, you're gonna do the opposite. So if it's over at the top, you're gonna go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. And again, pull it tight. You can adjust it as you'd like. And keep going until you get till near the end of your plarn. Over and under, over and under. This next bit is sped up, so don't panic. Nobody can weave quite that fast. 
As you're weaving, pay attention to what you're doing and make sure that you're going over and then under, over and then under. If you mess up, it's okay. Just pull the plarn out and start over. Over and then under, over and then under. You'll see that one piece of plarn gets you pretty far, but what we have left of our tail won't go all the way back through. So we're gonna take our needle off and add another piece of plarn. To do this, you're gonna double knot those two pieces together. You can leave some of the tail exposed and we'll deal with that at the end. Just make sure that knot is secure. And then thread the other piece through your needle and go back to weaving. Once your loom is full, it's time to finish off this weaving. Take your last piece of plarn here and tie it around the attached piece and knot it. Make sure to get that real tight and just like before, do a double knot to secure it. You can leave the tail out and we'll deal with that later. Now we're going to remove our weaving from the loom. So we have to go to the back and carefully take off all the pieces that were taped down and remove that tape. Now that the tape is removed, very carefully flip it back over and start on one end and double knot the ends of the plarn together. One, two, Take the next tail and knot it to the one next to it. One, two, and repeat until you've got to the end of the line. Now your bottom is sealed. We'll deal with the tails in a minute. The top is a little bit trickier. 
You'll want to take all of the Plarn out of the loom very carefully and line up your stick, your popsicle stick or your actual stick with the weaving because what we're going to do is not around it or over top of it rather. And just like before, double knot the strings one next to the other. Now you'll want to look at your weaving and decide which side you think looks better, which is going to be the front and which is going to be the back. I think that this side, at least up top, looks a little bit better. So for your extra tails, put your front down, pull them together, get out that trusty tape again, squish them together and tape them down. You can do that with any extra strings that were sticking out as well. Okay, this one, I'm gonna use my needle to push through so that I can tape it in the back. Now for your bottom, you have a choice. You can leave it as it is, you can add beads to it if you want, or you can tape it up. I think I'm going to tape mine up. You could also, if you have really long tails like I do, trim them down before you tape them. Try to make it go evenly as best you can so that you still end up with a rectangle. I'm gonna add one more piece of tape there for good measure. Really secure it. So now I have my weaving. Now I'd like to add a hanger and a pom-pom. So using one of your extra strings, you can create a hanger by knotting it around the string on the outside of your weaving on either side. You may notice my stick is moving around a lot. This popsicle stick is maybe a little big, but that's all right. I'm going to tape those in place to help keep it centered. You could also glue it down if you felt so inclined. And now I have a hanger. To make a pom-pom, we're going to need some extra plarn. Take two fingers and spread them out just a little bit. Put the middle of the plarn between your two fingers, keeping them spread as best you can, and wrap that plarn around and around and around and around and around and around and around until you get to the end. And we're gonna do it with another piece of plarn. Holding it in place with your thumb. Wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. Take one of those littler pieces that you have, and you might need another hand for this. So if you have a grown-up nearby or a sibling, they can help. Very carefully remove from your fingers and use that little piece to tie a very tight knot around the middle. And of course, double knot it so it stays in place. Okay, it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, the best you can get it. Then take your scissors, and cut the top there and cut the bottom and then it's fluffing time fluff 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 now if your pom-pom like mine has some strings that are not quite even you can trim those off so that they're about the same and then find an area that's flatter and you can either glue it down or tape it down. I think I will glue it in place. Ta-da! You've made a really cool weaving. Well, thanks for joining me for Steam Stories, friends. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to see pictures of your completed project. So post them below as a comment on this video, email them to us at pleasanthills at einetwork.net or post them in our special Facebook group, 
Pleasant Hills Library Virtual Programming. Our next STEAM stories will air on October 14th, and it's all about catapults. Can't wait to see you then, friends. Bye.